Hello, Mary Me. So, I am back from the land of very good food and very limited uh, internet connection. Aqua at my mother's place. So, yeah, I thought it was about time to make some videos again. And the video I want to make today is about intention in magic. Now, my favorite occult author of all time, Don Craig, uh, wrote uh, a blog post about it where he basically said that he doesn't agree with systems such as the secret and so on, which is basically just intention based. And I just thought that I would uh, give my two cents about this topic because it's a very interesting one. And I believe that intent is extremely powerful. And I cannot say anything about the secret because I haven't tried out that system. But I definitely think that there are power in positive thinking. Uh, but I doesn't I don't necessarily think that positive thinking includes magical intent. Let me try to explain what I mean. Let's say you bake some bread. And you are thinking, ah, oh, this is gonna turn out great, this is gonna turn out great. This is gonna turn out great. That doesn't necessarily mean magical intent to send forth energy, spirits, uh, uh, changing the world around you to make it great. Basically, you can send magical intent on the wings of positive thinking, so to speak. The same is I don't think that all negative thoughts have magical intent behind them, or we would sort of be cursing one another left and right. However, I also think that magical intent can end up there somewhat accidentally. I mean, how many times haven't you just gotten so upset with somebody in the line in front of you or something like that and you probably thought a few things that aren't nice about them. I don't think that that necessarily will set off a curse. Though I think it is possible to do so if the emotions get so strong that they get imbued with magical intent. And I also think that positive or negative uh, positive or negative thinking can uh, change the energy around you in different ways. So that if you are very negative, you can see this. I can definitely see this. Both me and my hubby have depression, and when we are both ill, the room gets a very, very uh, negative feel. And I think that can then feed into it again and feed into it again and feed into it again. Well, if you go into, for example, a kindergarten with lots of happy kids that run around and play and learn you have this upbeat, active energy. And I don't necessarily think there are magical intents behind making that energy. It's just that like attracts like. So that if you have very active, very positive, very happy energy, that will attract more of that very upbeat, happy energy. While if you have very sad, depressed energy, that will attract more of that. However, magical intent, I feel, is when you put your mind to the thought of making magic happen. Let me see if I can make another example. Have a look at this ring. It has a red glass stone in it. So let's say I want to improve my ability to be reasonable about money because I have a tendency to overshop a bit. Let's say I want to uh, attract responsibility when, when it comes to money. And then red is a very very good color because it affects the uh, root chakra which has to do with uh, the basics, with money, with earth with the material and so on. So I decided I'll wear something red 
to uh, attract sensibility when it comes to money. So I decided, okay, I'll wear this ring. So I put it on my finger. Now I have put that on my finger and I'm wearing it with magical intent. And then it becomes a spell. Because then I use my magical will to say this is what I will manifest with this action. However, if it was just like today, I was thinking, yeah, it'll fit my outfit. Let me just slip this on. Then, yes, to a certain degree, I am still affected with uh, by the energies and frequencies of the color red, of the protection that you can find in the equal arm cross, and so on and so forth. But not to the same extent, because I haven't used my will to direct that energy. So, I think that there's a very big difference between uh, positive thinking and magical intent. And I think that ritual, like with all the candles and ritual daggers and all of that, can enforce ritual intent and the symbolism, colors, stones, whatever you use can help add energy to your intent. But I do also think that magical intent can manifest on its own. And I also think that magical intent is what takes something from being a mundane act to being a magical act. Because I think everything can be a magical act. I mean something as simple as brushing your hair. <coughs> you can decide this is a magical act. You take up your brush and each time you run it through your hair you think to yourself uh, I attract beauty for example. Then suddenly it is a magical act. It becomes a magical ritual. It becomes a spell. While brushing your hair normally only gets the tangles out of your hair. So I think that Magical intent is very powerful, and I do think that magical intent can manifest on its own, but I think it's much more easy to have it manifest with a proper ritual setting or within the concept, uh, context of a spell, and here's why. <coughs> There's several reasons. One of them is that I think it's easier to get into the mindset of that intent. If I have the ritual, if I have the structure around me. No, not everybody will will think like that. Some will think that in basically it's easier just to get a magical intent, send it out, done. But for me, when I it's easier, for example, to cure a headache by lighting a blue candle and saying, as this candle burns down, uh, uh, all ailments are banished from this body. It's a simple little ritual, and it helps me get that intent out. So that's one of them. The other is that You can think of it like this. Let's say you have one of those, uh, you, you know, kids you often play with, you have a board and you have one board on, and you have one kid on one side and another kid on the other side, and there's a bounce back and forth. Well, let's say you have a big person, me, sitting on one end, and the goal is to get me off the ground. Now you're going to have to add weight to the other side. Now if you are a tiny uh, uh, 60 kilos woman, you can jump on that uh, uh, swing all you want. It's not going to move me. I'm staying put. And often that is your magical will alone. 
you try to move the weight necessary to get your spell across, but the energy you can manifest on your own just isn't enough. So, uh, in the uh, analogy then, uh, this woman goes and she gets a few bags of sand, she gets some yards of paint, she adds some weight, and then she jumps on the swing and up I go. And it's the same thing, basically. Often it can be difficult. Those that are very, very good at it can manifest things on their own. But, but very often it's easier when you have the energy of the correspondences, of spirits, of ritual, of all of these things that add energy, add to it, so that you get enough force behind your magical intent to make manifest it. Basically, human beings have used ritual uh, since the dawn of our species, and it can be very, very powerful. Now, I'm not saying here that the ritual needs to be very complex. I mean, I would say 90% of the rituals I use are very, very simple. I like them quick and simple and easy to do in everyday life. Like, for example, um, let's say a money spell. Uh, you find a green candle. Uh, I would then write into the candle what I need the money for, let's say, um, a new computer. So I write that. Uh, or and I, sort of the money that I need, and a few symbols that is conducted to get in this. Then I uh, light that candle, and I say a little prayer over it, that uh, sum up my intent, and I spend, uh, let's say, a good number, nine days, because that's a number that uh, is associated with material things, and I spend then spend nine days lighting the candle a little bit of the time, saying that intent, and so on. And that is a little ritual. Um, very often when I have nightmares, I will go and find one of my citrines, and I will place it that under my pillow. That's a little ritual in itself. I don't see anything more than placing that stone under my pillow with the magical intent of banishing nightmares. So rituals can be very, very, very simple. But I think that such ritual acts helps focus the magical intent. They are not strictly necessary, but they add force and energy behind your spell, and they also help you focus on that intent. It's a bit the same as why writing up a goal. This can be a, a good idea. You decide to now be uh, get in so much shape that I can run a marathon. So you write that up, you place it on your fridge, so that you see that every time you go for into the fridge you see that goal there. Because that helps you focus on that goal. It makes it more tangible, more real than just deciding yeah this is what I want to do. And it's a bit the same with magic, doing a ritual with it, and basically using uh, ritual to manifest your magical will, helps you get it tangible in your mind, and makes it easier for you to manifest. So yeah, <laughs> now this isn't a direct response to the blog I read or anything like that, it's just that that blog got, uh, got me thinking about this, and my beliefs about it, and I definitely think good authors are like that. They make you think and make you come to conclusions about what you yourself think about it. And for me, I think that Positive or negative thinking has an effect, because 
because uh, it affects the energies around you, it can attract spirits uh, who are associated with a certain energy or not, and so on and so forth. But I still think that thinking positive or negative is something different than magical intent. And that magical intent can manifest on its own, but that it is stronger when applied to the use of some ritual, some spell, or some sort of focus. So yeah, that's my opinions on it. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Have a great day. And blessed be.